back with another D, D movie time and today this morning shark week ended with our last upload we hope you enjoyed it and this is our normal friday upload so today core is all decked out patriotically so uh we got some presidential stuff going on this year and fourth of july just passed and I think we've talked about this movie in the past, about doing it for 4th of July, but this close to 4th of July we'll have to do. Today we are watching, do you know what the name of the plane that the president flies around in is called? Do you? No. It's called Air Force One, and that's the name of the, tonight's movie, Air Force One. Uh, so, Cora's been watching 24. Yeah? Yeah, we talk about it. What's wrong with talking about 24? It's an awesome show. It has Jack Bauer saving the day. Lots of explosions. Well, it's a nice movie. I've always, it's not a 24 movie. It's not part of the 24 world. But I've always felt like it should be because it feels like part of 24. Like this whole thing could be in a season of 24. Um, but yeah, uh, this has Harrison Ford, Gary Oldman, which you should remember from the Harry Potter movies. Da, da, he da, played da. Sirius Black. Da, 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 He's also in a bunch of other movies we'll probably be watching. Um... It does have Xander Berkeley in it, too, who played George Mason in 24. Maybe that's why. Um, Is there any funny man? Uh, not really. I mean, it's not a funny movie. It's an action movie. I know, but I gotta at least have some comedy. Why? I mean, I guess there's a little humor here and there sprinkled in. Uh, but this is one of your grandpa's more liked movies. I'm not going to say it's one of his favorites, but he definitely likes this movie a lot. Um, huh? We have. Anyways. Uh, so yeah, we're going to watch Air Force One and we hope you all enjoy and we'll be back after the review after the movie so Cora can give us a review of what the movie was about and then we'll give our final scores so we will see you all in a little bit
In a speech tonight in Moscow, the president issued a direct challenge to terrorist nations I around the world. Things. What are the risks involved in such a bold policy initiative? They hated your speech, didn't they? I'm afraid we wanted the guns to back it up. Air Force One clear for takeoff. Thank you for your hospitality, Moscow. Oh, So we just finished Air Force One. Cora, what was this movie about? So basically there was a president that just got elected, I assume. No, he they just they captured a bag a terrorist. Not captured a terrorist. And they were talking about it and saying that America should have gotten involved sooner and we would never do this again. Where we wait too long because of politics. And the pres that's why the president said we're never going to wait too long again. Anyways, go on. So then he was simply gone on trip to, um, I forgot. He was returning to America from Russia. Yeah. And some... After Russia decided to go ahead and board the ship, you mean and plane, plane, ship, basically the exact same thing. No, they're not. They're totally different. One flies in the air, one sails on the sea. What ship am I talking about? A spaceship? Or a, sp a sea well, ship? Well, this isn't a sci-fi movie. There's a plane in, in all the posters. It's called Air Force One, which is a real-life plane. Doesn't seem to me if it doesn't seem to be if it crashed in the movie. That's the movie. <laughs> Anyways, continue on. So he gets on the plane to go home, and some Russian terrorists snuck on board. How they sneak on board? They must have planned that pl planned that for you. They pretend to be a camera crew, That's a true. news crew. Yeah, they simply made a new idea, ID, did some other born stuff, and must have changed their fingerprint or something. Okay, anyways. Then what happens once the plane takes off? Um, basically... The Secret Service guy? Helps trigger the takeover of the plane. Mm -hmm. Remember? Okay, we'll say it. Whatever he just said. Oh my god, Cora, come on. I 
and the uh, the the guy uh, helps them. Stop playing with your skirt. I'm itching. Well, wait. Okay, so they take o do they take over the plane? Yes. Do they get the president? No. What's what's the president do during the whole thing? Definitely take a pod. You mean an escape pod? Escape pod, yes. They try to get him to the escape pod, and it looks like he got away, right? Yes. And then uh. The terrorists, they end up taking over the plane, correct? Mm-hmm. And then what happens? Oh, the, oh, they are losing fuel and they are going down. They're not losing fuel. The pilots were trying to land the plane, remember? Yeah, they were trying to land the plane. And as soon as the wheels were touching the ground, they do a broken in there and... And then shoot one guy, pretty sure they shot the other guy, because they were both trying to get it down. And then they, and the two people took over, and they somehow got up. And I bet they won't eat, and I bet they even, they didn't even take any pilot lessons. Well, so, one was, one was being the pilot. One was their pilot. Anyway, so once the airplane's back in the air, what do we learn? Yep, so he's kind of like our Jack Bauer slash John McClane of this movie, right? Because mm -hmm. he's, it's kind of got that feel, you know, kind of like 24, where he's like, you know, acting in secret against the terrorist, and he's kind of doing it like in a different location, but in the same place, like John McClane did. Yeah, basically Jack Bauer became president. Yep. So anyways, um, what do we learn the bad guys want at this point? For the handle <coughs> of the civilization to be free. Radic. Yeah, Commander Radic to be free. General Radic. General Radic, Commander Radic, same The thing. terrorist leader. Terrorist leader. And, uh, what are they going to do if they don't get what they want? Well, there's a couple things. No, there was one thing he said. He said he would do every half hour until General Radic was released. Wait, didn't he say that? No, that was when, uh, they wanted fuel. And he said, for every minute you refuse us fuel, I'll shoot another hostage. But... When it was when they wanted Radic released, he said, "I'll give you a half hour, and every half hour I'll shoot a hostage." Realistically, even though he, I mean he should have been like you know yeah, he should have probably given him an hour or so because I feel like that would have been a little bit more believable if they got an hour to do it. I feel like not. I mean, even in that final scene, that one scene. It was still taking a really long time. So, I mean, it should have just been like, you know. They could have done it, but like, I bet the dude. We'll get into that later. So, anyways, he's saying he's going to shoot somebody every half hour until the general is released. And what is the president doing? Gone off a killing spree. And lowering the fuel. Yep. And once he uh, lowers the fuel, what does he do then? Call somebody? Well, Call the, uh... he breaks out the other, all the hostages. Oh, yeah. He breaks out a hostages. <laughs> Just yep, that was part of it. And they sent a fax telling them that they gotta lower the plane and slow down so they can refuel. How's the refueling go? Oh, my favorite part of the. Oh! My favorite part of 
of what my favorite parts of the movies happen. Explosion. I need to talk like that. Explosion. Anyways, so does Air Force One explode? Oh, the fuel ship explodes. That's fuel why I made the explosion. Why do you keep calling planes ships? They're not ships. They're planes. They're, they're a plane ship. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. So they got most of the hostages off, but who did the terrorists capture? The president. Yep. And how does the and do the terrorists get what they want? Why? Because the president had his daughter. They threatened to shoot his daughter in the head. And then the president, after Raddick is ordered to be released, does he make a play? By the way, he's like, take his time, and he was like, get another glass knife, and it was like, he then he got free, then like, he... Grabbed the gun, fought him, shot two of the terrorists, chased after the main guy, played by Gary Oldman. And then he said probably the best line in the movie, right? Get off my plane! And then kicks him off while he's still dead. Well, actually, he just let him go, and the force of letting him go with that strap around his neck snapped the bad guy's neck, killing him. And then they stopped Raddick from being released, right? Yeah. Raddick gets shot. Yeah, then he basically just execute without the execution platform, like what it does, like... Yep. And then, uh... The movie's still not over, right? Yes, we still got the traitor. Yep, still got the traitor to deal with. And what what do they do to get the people off the plane? They send a rescue ship. <laughs> They're planes, not ships. Just Aeroplanes. Airplanes. Bam! No. Another name for a plane is a ship. No, ships are in the ocean or in space. <laughs> Anyways, what is this plane going to do to get them off? They sort of make a zip line, right? And his daughter screamed just like you would have screamed. No. Yeah. Anyways. So, what does the traitor do? Oh. He, he basically tries to get on since only one more person can get on. That's the president. Yeah. President gets on where he as well must be knocked off for two seconds or something. So he dies by crashing into the ocean? Yeah, which I could tell it was CGI. Like, I know, like, they want to, like, get... Well, this movie is from the late 90s, so I mean... I know, I know, but, like, I get you from the late 90s, but can you at least do a little bit better? A little bit? That's all it asks? Just a little Oh, trust bit. me, that's a lot better than some movies. Wait till we get to The Mummy Returns. I've talked about this often on the channel. The Mummy Returns has the worst CGI I've ever seen. And that came out after this movie. So, that's pretty bad. Anyways, so they get the present on board and it's all over, right? Mm -hmm. Alright. Well, that wraps up this portion of the review. When we come back... We'll give our final scores and thoughts. So we will see you all back here in a little bit. 
For thousands of years, the world has been protected by the Guardian of Light, or as he is more commonly known, Santa Claus. Over the centuries, factors such as fear and prejudice, greed and jealousy, misunderstandings, betrayal and war have segregated most humans from the magical world of elves, fairies, wizards, and the like. This has resulted in many misconceptions and generalizations of the true nature of Santa and his world. This six-book series by Sean Connaughton begins as the current of a long series of guardians is murdered by a group of monstrous enemies recently escaped from an enchanted South Pole prison. These creatures are loyal to the darkness, an evil force determined to exterminate the light in order to enslave all creatures of the world. Shane Connor, an average young man, suddenly finds himself being trained as the new guardian. As he adapts to his new life among fantastic creatures, he goes on an adventurous quest with a legendary wizard for the ultimate weapon to use against the darkness, and faces murderous enemies like Rasputin, Morgana Le Fay, Krampus, and many more. Along with his best friend, Joe Gomez, Shane encounters politics, history, mysterious murders, new loves, his own hidden past, and racial dynamics among the fantasy races that turn out to be all too real. Their adventures reveal the true nature of the world and challenge the current state of how all races interact. This series expertly melds myths, legends, history, faiths, folklore, and secret societies into a fascinating, cohesive, comprehensive world of wonder and magic. From Atlantis to Olympus, from Hades to the moon, and from broomstick races to Christmas deadlines, join the new Santa Claus on his amazing journey. But beware! Will Shane's quest achieve his ultimate goal of destroying the darkness and preserving the light of the world? Or is he actually playing right into a plot by dark forces that will result in his, and our, ultimate doom? So make your list and check it twice for the Guardian of Light book series. Download your audiobook or ebook today from Audible, Amazon, or iTunes. All right, Cora, Air Force One, starting with you. On a scale of 1 to 10, what would you give this movie? A 10 out of 10. It had my favorite scene in the entire world. It's Explosions! Anything else that you liked about it? Explosions. Besides all the explosions. <laughs> Who is your favorite character? Harrison Ford? No, Mr. No, Jack Bauer President. Harrison Ford, that's the actor's name. President Marshall? Yeah, sure, I won't call him Jack Bauer. He literally reminds me of Jack Bauer if he was. <coughs> Maybe this movie inspired 24, who knows? Uh, I mean, there was a couple people who are who were in this that were in 24. The traitor was uh, the guy who plays George Mason. Uh, there was another guy at the beginning when they were getting on the plane that was like doing the security check that played one of the uh, people in season two. So there's at least two uh, I saw definitely. Also, I think I saw the uh, mayor from the first two Robocop movies in this. Glenn Close is pretty popular. There was a Cylon. But I won't tell you who that was because I'll leave that for a surprise when we get to Battlestar Galactica. Tell me! No! That's so what did you think of Gary Oldman? This is a definitely like the second or third character because you've seen him in Harry Potter as Sirius Black and you've seen him as Dracula in Bram Stoker's Dracula last Halloween season. The spooky season. So what did you think of uh, Gary Oldman's character? How'd he do being a bad guy? You know, he actually has played a lot of bad guys. 
there's a few actors I know that most of their roles, they play bad guys. Like the guy who does the voice of Chucky, Brad Dorf. I think that's all he's ever really done. Or he's done a little side cameo character that really doesn't matter. But even in that, he is supposed to give you that feeling he's a bad guy. But he's really just a red herring. A red what? A red herring. Like the thing you caught in the Sea of Thieves uh, Monkey Island thing. You know, when you go fishing for the red herring. A red herring is something that is supposed to draw your attention while something else is going on. So like a red herring as a person, if you say someone is a red herring, then you're basically saying they're telling you to look at this person so they're wanting you to ignore someone else who's on screen. And while you're too busy looking at the red herring or thinking the red herring is the one that's responsible, something else is really going on in the background. That's where the term red herring comes from. So. Dad, you only know that I played the, the, the second one. The first one is literally too short and too boring. What are you talking about? You have to catch the fish in the first one. And that... <laughs> And we're not talking about Sea of Thieves. I'm just saying, like, you had to catch one in Sea of Thieves. And that's the joke. If you don't know the joke, I, guess, I don't know what to tell you. Anyways, are we done? Okay, moving on to my score then. On a scale of 1 to 10, I have to fully agree with Cora. This movie is a 10 out of 10. I really do like uh, Harrison Ford's character in this. Um... The action is really good. The get off my plane is probably one of my favorite parts. My second favorite part is probably when he's telling them to shoot at Air Force One. And the pilot says, give me some room. I've been ordered to fire on Air Force One. That's probably like one of my second favorite lines out of this movie. Um... Yeah, I mean, this is just a really good movie, and it's very patriotic, and it definitely, it's definitely worth a watch. If you've never watched this before, you should definitely check it out. I know it's kind of an older movie now, but it still holds up pretty darn well. So, that is going to go ahead and wrap up this episode. Uh, I am still running my book six contest if you want a chance to get a free signed copy of book six after it comes out please get in those uh selfies with you and your favorite book so far in the series uh, i'm curious to know you know which book is gonna kind of win which book is gonna be in the most pictures um yeah, I'm super excited to see all the pictures and know who's going to win. So, And then once I pick the winners, then I will put those pictures in a video. I won't put any of your information. I'll just put show the pictures. And uh, then I will contact the winners, let them know I selected their photo, and they will be receiving a free signed copy. So... Check the description below for the email address so you know where to send your selfie. With that said, we're going to go ahead and wrap this one up. It's been great doing this, and I will see you guys, along with Cora, in the next episode.